Welcome to today's Global Connections television program. I'm Bill Miller. The main purpose of this show is to promote a discussion of major international issues, such as war and peace, economic and social development, climate change, and human rights that impact people worldwide. New knowledge will inspire, involve, and motivate all of us to better deal with these challenges and to help create a better world. Today's program will focus on what one group is doing to work with young people to eliminate poverty and to promote sustainable development. We'll be back in just a moment to talk about these and other important issues. Welcome back to our program. Young people have a vital role to play both today and tomorrow in dealing with major problems. My guest today is going to focus on a very interesting organization that's working with young people to deal with many of these problems. My guest today is Susan Johnson. Susan Johnson is the co-founder and co-director of Chime In International. She has a diverse career in the travel and hospitality industries. Susan is also the director of operations at Chime In. Susan Johnson, welcome back to Global Connections Television. Thanks, Phil. It's great to be here. I appreciate you being with me. Let's talk. We're going to jump right into this. Tell me about the organization, Chime In. What exactly, when was it formed? Why was it formed? What does it do? Okay, so Chime In is actually an international youth-based initiative designed to empower youth, develop leaders, and really bring young people from all over the world together to do better. Um, it has a really interesting beginning. It actually began back in 2006 with a woman by the name of Kelly Sullivan Walden. She created a program called the Dream Project, and it worked with the Millennium Development Goals. It went into elementary schools, probably K through 12, um, and was very, very successful. Fast forward to about 2013, I was looking to create a youth ambassador program for a nonprofit. We were introduced and she wanted to take it to the next level and bring it to older youth, 17 to 24. So we collaborated to create the program we have now. And you mentioned the Millennium Development Goals, very important, eight logical, practical, verifiable, quantifiable goals adopted by the UN back in 2000, ran to through 2015 to reduce abject poverty by 50%, promote universal primary school education, to empower women, and five more that we won't get into. But these were really major goals that galvanized the world and brought not only people from within the UN system, governments, but also the private sector, non-governmental organizations to participate. So it sounds like you have really tapped into them to, to expand upon them. Yeah, Kelly really had a vision back in 2006 that she wanted to get involved with this. And when I met her, I could absolutely see what she wanted to accomplish. And it really fit into the model that we wanted. You know, we wanted to have an international-based group of youth that really felt they could make a change, but weren't maybe necessarily doing everything they could yet. They didn't have either the, the knowledge or the connections. So this gives them a platform to chime in and, and talk about the things that are important to them. And we use the Millennium Development Goals, which are now the Sustainable Goals, as a base for their projects. And where can our viewers go to get more information? You have a website? We do. It's www.chimein.org. Uh, you can see our youth ambassadors. You can see some of the, the projects that they're doing. And we are looking for youth ambassadors, so you can also apply there. And when you go to the website, you will hear a chime. You, <laughs> you will, will, absolutely. You'll know you're on the right website <laughs> because you'll hear a chime. You also have a motto. I guess is this your motto, I am the change? What exactly does that mean in regards to what you're doing? So it, I am the change. Every time we do one of our teleconference calls, we always finish with the saying, I am the change, you are the change, we are the change, go be the change. And what that really means is that every person can make a difference. You know, a lot of people feel that one person can't, but when you really look at it and you look at what some of these kids are doing around the world, they're making a difference even though they are it. So they are the change, even if it's just alone. This gives them that opportunity to do it in a group. It certainly does. Now, there are, you referenced also the Sustainable Development Goals. These were the goals that were adopted uh, basically to start from January 1st, 2016 to run through 2030, December 31st, 2030. And there are now 17 Sustainable Development Goals with 169 yeah. targets, I believe. But the important thing is, are the 17 
sustainable development goals. Now you've adopted about six of them. Correct. And what we might do is just focus a little on each one and maybe give some examples of what your group and the young people are doing. Uh, let's start off just eradicate poverty and hunger. What types of programs do you have in that area? So we actually have a couple of different ones. Um, first of all, we could talk about Techo, our uh, ambassador from Guatemala, that's Tony. Mm -hmm. And he works for Techo, which is a roof building project. We actually supported him in December. We went to Guatemala and we actually built 10 homes in the Guatemalan dump for families that were looking to, to make a change, looking to make a step up. So again, helping to eradicate poverty. Um, when you look at uh, Jeetan from Nepal, he actually, when the Nepal um, had its earthquake, he actually worked with the Red Cross, created uh, Vermont for Nepal, and raised over $70,000 to give back to the Red Cross. So they're working with those type of things as well. So that's two for that particular goal. Mm -hmm. And he went to Guatemala and built 10 homes, is that correct? We did. We actually took a delegation of about 65 down there, um, several of our ambassadors. And uh, it was great because when we built the homes, the people that were getting them had to actually be a part of it. They had to pay for part of the home. Mm -hmm. They had to provide us lunch every day, and they had to help us build. So we had the opportunity to go and actually work with 10 families and build them homes. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And this project's called Techo. Techo, techo. El Techo means roof in Spanish. Absolutely. So. It's kind of like a Habitat for Humanity. It's all throughout uh, South America, and it's youth-based. Mm -hmm. So these are youth that lead these. Um, the team that we went and worked with, we actually lived with them in the dump. Um, we lived in a school inside the Guatemala City dump on the, the cat portion of it. And they're all young. I mean, they mm -hmm. ranged everywhere from about 16 to, I would say, probably about 37. So young, I mean, amazing kids. Mm -hmm. Do you have any future plans to go back to Guatemala or to some other Central American country? We do, actually. Our ambassadors from last year, many of them are coming back as mentors. They loved being in Guatemala. And as we left, we promised that we would go back. So our goal is to take a delegation back at the end of the year with our, um, our mentors, which are now our old ambassadors, mm -hmm. and do it again. Great project. Oh, <laughs> it certainly yeah. is, and very and necessary, very yeah. vital. And it was really life-changing. I actually brought my family, and they came back changed, I mean, to, to work with the people and to see the love and, and the dedication mm -hmm. of some of these young people is, is incredible. It's often said that when you travel, you develop a new outlook on life. You, you see how life is in another country to some degree. Mm -hmm. You see the problems people are confronting, but you also develop an appreciation, more of an appreciation for your own country to a large degree. But it, I would imagine that when you go overseas to work on these projects, as someone who was in the Peace Corps many years ago, that going overseas and working these projects really is a life-altering experience. Oh, absolutely. We took, you know, as I said, my family, I have a 21-year-old and a 20-year-old that went. Um, we also brought someone that's 16 that want, was interested in the Youth Ambassador Program, as well as ambassadors from Nepal, from uh, the UK, from Los Angeles, you know, Tony. And uh, each one of them came back with, again, that true appreciation for for what we have here in the United States, and also for the love that people have there, although that they, you know, they they live in a in a in a situation that's not as good as ours, there's still a family, there's still fun, there's still laughter, and they appreciate the things that they have. And I think those of us that went really came back feeling that we actually got more than we gave. Now, another goal is to achieve universal primary education mm -hmm. for young people, obviously. What have you had going on in that particular area as far as trying to improve the, or get more children in school and perhaps raise the educational levels? So again, our ambassador from Nepal, Jeetan. So Jeetan was actually a Bhutanese who was raised in a refugee camp in Nepal. He now lives in Vermont. And his first project before the earthquake was called SESW, Sustainable Education for a Sustainable World. And he raised money to actually build a, um, a school over in Nepal and still works on that today. So again, trying to find money to buy books and those things for Nepal. Did the school, was it built primarily before the earthquake? During, well not during, was, but after the earthquake? It was started before the earthquake and it was is finishing now. It's finishing now. Yep. But he went over there to support the, the rebuild of everything. How do you locate these, uh, these really outstanding students, outstanding young people who really want to make a difference in this world? How do you locate them? Do they come to your website? Do you go to them? Do you hear about somebody may give you a reference, say this is a young person you really need to speak with and talk to about getting involved in your program, but how does that work? So it's a little bit of both. Um, anyone that's interested, you know, particularly if you know someone that is outstanding that you think would be good for our program, you can go to our website. We have a list of criteria. We'll ask them to submit a video. We'll ask them to submit a letter about why they'd like to be an ambassador for Chime In. They'll we'll ask for a couple of references, and then we'll contact them and speak with them. So they could do it themselves. It could be an aunt, an uncle, uh, a teacher um, that could actually, you know, get them interested in applying. So this is a real easy. Do you have future educational projects on the drawing board or 
areas you'd like to go into? We do. We've actually talked about several. Um, one of the ones this year, we'd like to do something in the United States because although there's many you know, great organizations we can support around the world. We have some here in the United States. So we've talked about working on one of the Indian reservations. Um, again, going back to Guatemala, our ambassador from Jordan has just spent a month in Jordan doing a huge project, an art therapy project with one of our mentors. We know that they'd like to go back. And then we've also talked about doing something in maybe the Dominican Republic or the, or the UK or somewhere in Europe. How do you identify your partners? Let's just say the Dominican Republic. With whom would you work in the DR if you were to develop this type of program? The Ministry of Education with the governmental agencies, NGOs, who, who would be your partners? You know, we would we really take the time to search and see who the best fit would be when we try to identify a need that fits with our goals and then look from there. Um, Techo does have uh, a, an actual organization there so we could work with them, but it's something that we're looking at. So we are looking for someone to come to us too. And they very well may Absolutely. <laughs> after the program goes out. That's very, very possible. Well, another very important area that you're focusing on is to empower women and to promote gender equ equity. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was a goal number three in the Millennium Development Goals. It's goal number five in the Sustainable Development Goals. How important is it to develop programs to help women, not only adults, but also young girls, women of all ages, to be more productive, to be more active, to be more involved in helping to create their own world? Oh, it's very important. You know, women, coming from my own experience, I think women will lead the change. You know, women have so many things to offer, and, and not that men don't, but I believe that women come from a different, a different mindset, a different background, and to find young women who want to support young women. Um, one of our new youth ambassadors, Priyanka, her role model is Malala. I mean, again, she just is, she's so inspired by her desire to make mm -hmm. women uh, more present, you know, people to look at them and, and that. So I think it's very important. And what, what, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, and, and I think that, that there are many girls that would like to model people like Malala and make a difference. And there are many around the world doing that right now. <laughs> she is a tremendous She's, role uh, model. Unbelievable. Yes, she certainly is. So are there some projects that are underway right now? Are you looking at developing projects for young women or whatever the case might be in the future? For projects for women right now, no, we are looking for one. I do believe that um, one of our youth ambassadors will come on and maybe do something along those lines. Uh, the gal that worked on it in this past year, um, she did a great job. Uh, she actually went around and did a little bit of women and gender equality. That was our ambassador, Kat. She's from the UK. Mm -hmm. She actually held focus groups throughout, the, throughout Europe, um, asking students how they felt about gender equality, empowering women, and, and working between the different countries. She had a phenomenal summer mm -hmm. doing several workshops around the uh, Europe. You're watching Global Connections Television, which is a privately financed, independently produced program. The opinions expressed on Global Connections Television are solely those of the moderator and his guest. Our viewers are invited to check out the website at www.globalconnectionstelevision.com to view previous shows. If you're interested in distributing our shows through PBS, Community Access Television, educational institutions, a website, or any other media outlets, please go to our website for more information. Global Connections Television is provided as a public service at no cost. Today, we're looking at a very interesting organization called Chime In International and what they're doing to work with young adults, or young students, I should say, to help create this better world. My guest today is an expert on Chime In. My guest today is Susan Johnson, who is the Director of Operations for Chime In. Susan, we've been talking about three very important issues. Let's go to a fourth one, ensuring environmental sustainability. When we talk about that, there's probably no other issue in the world more important than this because also under that rubric is climate change. And we're all connected, 7.3 billion of us, to this whole issue of climate change and how the climate is adversely affecting every country in the world, it seems Absolutely. like. I've not heard a single country report that things have gotten better it's because of climate change. It's always our snows, the glaciers are melting, the seas are rising, desertification is taking place. What are you doing in this particular area? So one of our youth ambassadors last year was Manda from Mongolia, a brilliant young student. Um, she actually took her project and went out and tried to educate students her own age, she's at university, about their crisis with water. A lot of people in Mongolia don't realize that Mongolia is having an issue with water. So she spent uh, a lot of time going out interviewing students, uh, educating them on the need for looking at water, for sustainability, and it was a great project for her. She really enjoyed it. Uh, we had a young gal who was from um, Ecuador who did the same thing. 
And well, you mentioned Ecuador and Bolivia comes to mind because when you look at the Andes, there are a, lar a large number, a large number of the glaciers are disappearing in the Andes, and you've got people who live on the Altiplano, the high levels, who depend upon those glaciers for their water. And at some point, those glaciers are going to be gone if we continue moving in the same direction that we're moving right now. So this is an extremely important area. Again, how did you develop this program with Mongolia? Did, so all of the projects that the Youth Ambassadors tackle, we work with them individually to figure out where their passion is, what they'd like to do, and then we get them to determine what their project is and basically help them create that. So each one of them really comes up with their own project. We're there to support them and we find mentors from around the world to actually work with them. Oh, wonderful, that's great. Now, so you've, do you have some others that are in the pipeline right now who are on, or they're on the drawing board that you're gonna be looking at environmental sustainability projects with them? Yeah, well, we'll wait for the new ambassadors to come in and see what they'd like to do. Uh, the ambassadors that are now our mentors or are, uh, have come out of being an ambassador themselves, some of their projects will continue, and then some of them will move on and do other things. But we probably mm -hmm. have, I want to say, 10 of them that are coming back to help us. That's a hefty number. It's That's a good. Number. That's a good number to have. So if anybody's watching this show, they can go to chimein.org okay. and take a look at your website. Is there some site or some link on there that they can go for more information as to how they can become a youth ambassador and be involved in the program? Absolutely. So up at the top of the website, there's the bar. They can go on there and there's an actual place where they can uh, find out more about becoming a youth ambassador. And it'll give them all of the, re the qualifications and things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we all want to be healthy, <laughs> and so the next goal is to attain healthy lives for all. What do you have going in that area? What types of programs? So this one really came down to our um, ambassador from Australia. Katie was a fascinating girl. She actually met someone, um, she met my sister at a clinic down in Ecuador. Uh, Katie had been very ill. She'd had um, chronic fatigue and was down there recovering. Met, heard about uh, the organization, wanted to be a part of it, and then she is working on educating people about health. Um, and then we have Simran, who's from Dubai, and Simran also, she worked with doctors, um, talking to them about the need for um, better health and mm -hmm. interviewed them and actually got their feedback on ways that they could improve health in her area. Oh, for the people who live in that particular region. Absolutely. Yes. Have you had any conversation with any of the medical associations, with doctors groups, with uh, ministries of public health, folks like that to be involved in helping to lay out or to develop contacts for you in, other, in this country and in other areas? It's interesting because we just talked about doing this for the new year. Uh, the first year was our charter year, so we were you know, working things out. When we, uh, we finished the year, one of the first things we said was it would be great to get something medically involved and something dentistry-wise. Uh, when we were in Guatemala, we found that there was a real need for both medical and dental. So we would like to incorporate that in and then, and then work with different organizations. Exactly. And they, there are needs in so many different areas, and you've hit upon some really major ones. Now, the last one is to reduce inequality between and within countries. That, mm -hmm. that, uh, always, that one struck me as somewhat of a more a nebulous goal. How do you do that? What, what specific programs do you have to focus on that? So that one really is interesting. Uh, Leanne, our ambassador from Jordan, as I said, she's over in Jordan. They've just gotten back, actually. They worked with the Syrian refugees. They did a huge mm -hmm. art therapy project with a couple of other NGOs, and they brought um, people from the Syrian refugee camps as well as uh, some of the people from Jordan together to do huge murals. Uh, they did large art therapy mm -hmm. projects, trying to break down some of those barriers between the two groups. So it's, again, a, a, a wonderful project, and, and the, the footage that they've been sending back is just, it's incredible to see the beautiful murals that they've created and then the art therapy. They actually took uh, music, photography, and painting and put them together and had the kids work on that therapeutically. It was fabulous. Now, we've talked about six of the 17 sustainable development goals. There's still 11 more to go. <laughs> Do you have any plans to involve or to incorporate any of these other goals? Maybe as your program expands, as you develop more youth ambassadors, people who have interest in some of the others, for, for example, to goal number 14, to conserve the oceans or something like that, which is a major problem we see today with the fisheries drying up. We see that fish are dying. The coral reefs are bleaching because of climate change. This is a serious problem. It could really disrupt the whole ecological system in the world. But do you have any any opportunities or any ideas maybe to expand as 
people come on board who have an interest in another area that maybe we haven't talked about today? Absolutely. If there is a, an ambassador or a young student, again, 17 to 24 out there that, that has a passion for that and would love to get involved, we would certainly let them work on that goal. We picked the ones that we felt were uh, the largest of the group that we would have the easiest time working with for the first year, but expanding that this year would absolutely be a part of us, and, and we welcome anyone that would love to be a part of it to come on in. We'd love to talk about it. Now, if, I, if we're, we have somebody who taps into your chimein.org website, are there any hints that you give this person, for example, what types of students are you looking for? Well, it's not only students, but yeah, young, young, young professionals, folks. young people. Are there certain criteria, are there certain things that they could do, for example, get involved in local projects, community projects, uh, self-help projects, whatever the case might be, to develop a resume to maybe that would give them a leg up to get involved in your program? Are there certain courses they can take that would be of interest? Yeah, you know, I think the most important thing is that they're who they are, that they have a passion for making a difference in the world. You know, this past year we had a variety. We had some students that really wanted to get involved and we had other students that had been heavily involved. It was more important for us to get to know them and see the passion that they had and how we could work with them than to find that they had done all the right things. Because we can really develop leaders from any point. And so if they have a passion, if they'd like to be involved, if they you know, really want to make a difference, but they don't really have all that experience, have them apply anyway. Let's talk to them. Let's, let's figure out what we can do with them. Because sometimes it's that little diamond in the rough that is actually the, the, the beautiful gem. How many students would you like to have at the end? Of, we're in 2016 right now. How many students would you like to have by the end of the year involved in these activities? This year, I think we'd like somewhere between 14 and 16, mm -hmm. but our ultimate goal is to bring this even wider. It's to create a larger platform where we could have students from, or young people from all over the world be on one platform and chime in, talk about different things. So we'd really like to be able to bring this really much larger than that. Well, this is a very unique concept. It's a very unique program, and it's one that's very important as far as involving the young people and also making a change in the lives of literally thousands, uh, perhaps Absolutely. more people in other areas of the world and in the United States also. Last time you were here, we talked about the World Peace Caravan, mm -hmm. which was also a very unique concept. Give me a little bit of an update on the World Peace Caravan. Uh, as I understand, you had to put that on hold for the moment. But what, what exactly was it and why is it on hold and what were you planning to do with it in the future? Sure, so the World Peace Caravan, as you know, was a, a peace mission over to Jordan, Israel, <coughs> and Palestine. Um, we had done a lot of work on it. But we found that timing just wasn't right. Uh, between some of the tensions that were going on, we were looking for certain backing. We had gotten the backing from the countries, but we hadn't got the letters. And it really came down to a crunch time. You know, we were, the time was shortening before we really wanted to actually embark on the, the journey. And the decision was made by the owner that, you know what, it wasn't going to work. So we decided to postpone it and change it to something different. They're still in that modification stage. They're looking to do something here in the United States. So I'm not sure when it'll go off. But we had those youth ambassadors. Our youth ambassadors were actually the World Peace Caravan youth ambassadors. And they had done so many things. They were so passionate. They'd been on all these phone calls and creating all these projects mm -hmm. that we actually approached the owner and said, we'd actually like to take those ambassadors because we knew that it they had given us a year and that they would never be able to hang in there until the new project was ready. And so we'd like to take them, create a new organization, and let them continue and do their project. So in the original project, the Youth Ambassadors was to travel to Jordan, Palestine, and Israel. We kind of changed plans and went to support Tony in Guatemala. It really worked out beautiful. Well, you have the structure in place. You already, you've done the planning. Absolutely. I mean, you, you already have the program. Now, if you decide to resurrect it, be it in the United States or in the Middle East or wherever it might be, you have it on the drawing board. You know where to go with it. That's and right. it's just a matter of bringing in the individuals to fill out the, fill in the, on the certain roles. So it, it certainly is well underway. Are there any other projects that you have in mind that we haven't talked about today that you would like to do or you're thinking about doing or maybe another major activity that, that is uh, looming on the horizon? No, I think for right now we're really focused on getting ambassadors. You know, it's really our key thing is, is finding those ambassadors that want to be involved in, you know, some leadership development, uh, creating their own community service project, and becoming a part of our community service project because we always do try to do one in the year. Um, that's really our biggest thing right now, and then, then creating the project within that. Yeah. Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you wish to be in the world. Absolutely. In our last 30 seconds, how does that apply to what you're doing? Oh, it totally applies because we know that young people today are amazing and they just don't get enough exposure. Giving them that platform, they can be the change that they want to see in the world. Absolutely. They just need the platform to do it. They can chime in. Mm -hmm.
Well, I'm certain that many of our viewers will do that, Susan Johnson, and like I say, the, the, these topics are so important, and we realize, I mentioned earlier, that the youth are so involved in what we're doing today, but they're going to be even more involved in the future tomorrow because they are the future leaders, and these are the people who really need to be getting uh, really their feet wet on these particular issues because they can help make a change, and we all have to work together. Climate change, no one country can do it, no one region can do yep. it. You've got to work together. The UN plays a key role in that it brings the countries of the world together to focus attention on these particular problems and programs. And of course we saw with the conference, the COP21, Conference of Parties 21 in December in Paris this past year, how the countries of the world came together to really come up with a concrete proposal on how to deal with climate change because it is so absolutely critical. Not to say that the others are not. No. Good health is important. Absolutely. Education is important. It doesn't matter what the issue is and we all have to work together on this. And so this is something we need to focus on. And it certainly sounds like Chime In has done it. And Susan Johnson, I want to thank you so uh, very much for a very you. interesting and a very informative program. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Please join us again for the next episode on Global Connections Television. I'm Bill Miller. Thanks for watching.